Ah, okay then, a Taramps. And this is the HD 10,000, so this does claims to do 10K at 12 volts, one ohm. Now, Fuller Bridge Class D is the newer style of Class D, which is coming out and has been coming out over the last sort of five, maybe even longer actually, um, years or so, and it's been getting slowly better. I feel like with the Brazilian Full Bridge Class D technology, it's a bit like back when Class D wasn't really seen, and the biggest base amps you had were fuck off big Class ABs. And you know, you have a 2K Class AB amplifier that would be flipping longer than my workbench. Um, and then Class D came along, and everyone was like, nah, Class D. Class D sucks, it's dirty power, sounds bad, etc. It's noisy, unreliable, this, that, the other. And then Class D became the industry standard because it improved drastically and it was you were unable to tell the difference between the Class D and a Class AB when driving a subwoofer. Some people will argue they can. You probably really can't unless you have a seriously bad Class D and a seriously good Class AB. Generally, they sound exactly the same uh, with a good dampening, etc. So with... Fullbridge class A uh, class D. I feel like we're kind of in the early-ish stages of it, and it's getting better, but it's not quite there yet. Um, I think there's a few years to come and a few more uh, bit, a few bits of research to be done, and I think Korea will probably take it on and improve it to the level that current class D is in terms of reliability. The Tarams, this claims to do 10K. Now this uses 90N20 um, FETs on the outputs. And these are 94 amp and 200 volt, I believe, yes. And this uses eight of these, and eight of them will do 10K, but only for a very short amount of time on this small heatsink. This is the problem. These FETs can do stupid amounts of power for their size, but they need to be able to get rid of the heat as a result of doing that power. and for doing 10k in long periods of time this isn't really enough if you look at the bander uh 10k so the bander do an amplifier which is rated for the same amount of power at 12 volts and it is double the size not not only physically but it's got um not just eight outputs it's got 16 of the 90 and 20 so both amps are rated the same but the bander has twice the components inside so that it does the 10k over long periods of time whereas with the tar amps it's really only pretty much designed to do it um, for some burps or you know turn down a bit for daily um, now let's see what's wrong with this one what tends to happen a lot of the time is you've got these input fans and they're right next to the power supply and they suck in all kinds of dust and shit and it just lays on top of the power supply fets and okay uh, after a while the dust just is conductive and it just shorts out the, the gate to the um, to the other pins and uh, it just turns it on full uh, no switching needed and it just blows the whole power supply up. Uh, other times you'll have the output section will die and it will take the power supply with it. Uh, there's not a lot in these amps to be fair. Um, this one uses uh, an older drive circuitry. Here it doesn't use the uh, 2010S chip. It uses the, what is this, we've got a 18244. So let's see what's going on with this one then. Uh, is it output? Is it power supply? Is it both? That one's okay. That one's okay. Now these outputs run in pairs. So you've got a pair uh, of 90N20Ds that run together. And if a couple of them die, you only have to replace the pair. So the output section seems okay. Thank fuck for that. So what's wrong with the power supply then? Power supply has gone down. What the guy who repaired this before me didn't do, he didn't change the driver ICs, which are these four chips here. You've got one, two, three four driver ICs and they were the originals and they weren't be driving the uh, the power supply MOSFETs properly so let's pull this apart then and work out what's going on we need to take all the FETs out because they'll all be dead pretty much and then we need to uh, make sure we've got good strong drive on all of these drivers if not we'll replace them and we'll go from there now that looks flipping cool doesn't it look at that that is mad you can actually see the uh the little things that were connected to this pin. Okay, so we can see on the scope now, when uh, the power is applied, and not the remote, just the power, we've got our 9 volts here where it should be, and on some of the drivers, on some of the gates, we've also got around 7 volts. Over here we've got 8 volts. Uh, this one's okay, but over here we've got another 7 volts. 
and over this side we've got six volts so i'm pretty sure the driver chips are uh gone so what we need to do is take our hot air solder station and we need to remove the driver chips and see whether that voltage goes away let me just remove the uh, power there for a minute so if the driver chips are at fault then that voltage on the gate which shouldn't be there will go away that's one that's two now I'm not going to do the fourth one just yet because it's actually stuck it's actually hidden underneath one of the uh, legs for the transformer which is really annoying so that's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass to get out uh, so we're going to have to remove one of the legs of the transformer to get to that drive look at this i mean this is just poor board layout design isn't it you've got the driver ic which is right underneath that leg for the transformer and in order to change that which you need to change pretty much every flipping time the power supply dies you have to remove which looks like you can see this has been done before remove those two legs uh, lift them up so you can access the pads for the driver here very frustrating and annoying okay I did I did actually manage to get it from the depths within there so let's reapply the power and let's just check do we have any of those voltages on the gates where they were no we don't so that was as a result of a dead driver chips and now these are the uh, 2447s I believe are they uh, let's have a look. 4427, sorry. So we've got 4427s on the drivers. So I do have some spares of those, I believe. So let's load those up. And then we need IRF 1404s, which I've got some of, but I need 18. So we're going to have to buy a whole batch of new ones of those. And then that should be it for this one. Okay, so I'm just applying some fresh solder to a couple of pads here on the uh, driver chip. These pads are looking a little bit bare. Just want to make sure there's a nice healthy bit of solder there for the uh, IC to latch onto. Now I'm just going to apply some heat. Try and get this at the angle so you can see what's going on. Get them melty melty. And then let's make sure this is the right orientation. Yes it is. Uh, we're just going to dump that onto the uh, the wet pads. Get that lined up nicely. There we go. And now I'm just going to go ahead and heat. Apply some heat. Push down. Make sure that that is seated correctly. Lego. Lego. And blow to cool that down and get those pads set. And that's nicely in place. And so we can just check that that has worked and that that IC is a good one. Because I had a, a whole little pot of ICs here. And I can't remember which ones. I think they were meant to be good. But I just want to double check. So let's apply some power. Make sure that we've got power on the center pin. And nothing on the gate. Ooh, we've got 8 volts on that gate. So that, that one's no good then. Yeah, that's a shame. So I have to remove that one again. Let's just make sure that that 8 volts has gone away. Yes, it has. So it was, that was the issue then. Let's get another one. Uh, what have we got? I've got a couple in this bag here. Let's have a look see if any of these are any really good. Well, that doesn't, a couple of those look a little bit, I think some of these legs were slightly bent. So I'm just going to go and take the fine tip soldering iron and just, just load up a little bit of solder on top of some of these just to make sure that they are making a decent connection there because I don't want that to be skewing my results. Here we go, not the tidiest job in the world, but it's connected, so let's put that power back in now, and let's see, what do we have? Main power. I'm pretty sure that just smoked, actually. I'm sure I just saw some smoke from that. Okay, so yeah, that one just smoked up. Got a nice drive wave on this one. Uh, this one, de nada. Nunca. Ah, this is missions. Maybe I should just wait for my new ones to come. So, with the messy tire ramps, we have got the driver on there. I've had to lift these up. As you can see, this has obviously been done before. Um, and uh, it's a bit of a mess in there, isn't it? Deary me. 
very bad design flaw there. How the hell are you supposed to change the driver without screwing this up? You require a lot of heat to get this out. There's a lot of solder on these uh, transformer legs here. Um, and it, uh, if you keep removing it and putting it back, removing it, put it back, then you're going to end up damaging some of the top pads here. But they're still intact and it's still fine. Most of the connection is made from the underside of the board anyway, so that's not too much of an issue. The driver is in there and it's connected properly, but we can see here that the little capacitor that was next to this driver, um, it will actually actually burnt out um, when the amplifier went down. Um, now these capacitors, we can see there's one next to each and every driver, and they are little SMD capacitors. And as a result, they don't have any markings on them. So what the hell? How do we work out what value they are? Well, I could check the schematic, but seeing as I had this just here, I thought I would show you a way to check it if you don't have the schematic. Um, what I've done is I've removed another one of the capacitors that was intact next to this other driver up here. I'm going to bring it over to my uh, tester here and we're going to pop the little capacitor on the pads, push it down with the finger and see what it reads. Okay, there we go. So we have 170 nanofarads in the ESR 4.5 ohms, 3.1% worth of voltage drop. Now we're going to um, put this against number th one and three as well, just so we can get a live reading. Because sometimes I like to check the live reading and move my finger about, just check that there's nothing funny going on. Yep, that's about right. So there we go. It's about uh, well 170-ish NF. Anywhere between 150 and 170 will be fine. So I'm, I now need to find a replacement for that. Here I have a board from a very small 4 channel that blew so badly it was repair repairable. So what I've been doing is I've been using this uh, for spare parts. F fortunately it's got a whole array of SMD parts, capacitors, resistors, etc. And it's become very handy for times like this when I need a single part then I, I don't have a replacement for batch 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off a, a bunch of these capacitors and read them on the tester and see if any of them will match what we need on the tire ramps. So I didn't have any 170s or 150s, but what I did have is I had some 100s and some 50s and some 10s. So I'm going to make myself a 150-ish. Hopefully this will be around about 165 once we've finished. I'm uh, going to take three capacitors and we're going to put them in parallel. And these are so small. To do this effectively, what we're going to do is we're going to use some solder paste. So what we're going to do is stack them on top of each other, apply some solder paste to the ends of all three of them, and then apply the hot air gun. And what that will do is it will melt the, turn the solder paste into solder and turn the three of them into a fixed stack of three, which I can then put on the board of the terms. Annoyingly, my solder paste had gone off in the uh, tube, so uh, it was a bit too hard. You can see here, this is the condition of it. It's no use whatsoever. Um, so I just had to use my soldering iron and a very steady hand and some tweezers to get those three together. So now we have a little nice stack of three capacitors. I'm going to go ahead and measure them first, make sure that we do have the uh, desired capacitance there. Let's pop that on there. Ah, oh, would you look at that! Absolutely spot on! Fantastic stuff. So I'm going to drop this into the uh, board on the tar ramps now. And uh, yeah, just I'm going to fire up the drivers and make sure they're all working as intended. I also noticed that one of the capacitors that's meant to go here had come off the board on one of the legs. You can see here it's this style. It's a 22 uh, UF and this has a broken leg. I don't know if this is going to be salvageable. Very annoying uh, as I'm almost at the point where this amplifier is ready to put back together. Okay, new uh, 25 volt cap came and I've decided to tidy up those little SMD caps there. Um, little stack perfectly on there and they are solid and not going anywhere. Pretty nice. Um, so this board looks absolute state, as you know. <laughs> it's uh, not had a had a happy life, but hopefully we can make something that works solidly, even if it doesn't look too pretty. So now that this is all back in, I'm just going to run a test on the scope once more to make sure the drive waves are all looking good, and then we shall fit some new 1404 FETs, which came the other day. There we go, a whole load of new ones in there, and I've only bought the amount that I need, so <laughs> fingers crossed, nothing goes wrong, and they all, they all uh, work okay. Awesome, so we now have a drive wave, which looks like this, on all four banks of power supply. Let's just check that one that we just fitted, one last time. Yep, looking good. 
So now what I'm going to do is that seems pretty happy. So I'm going to load up um, some of the 1404s and we're going to see whether this thing will come on. Whoa, this thing has some super scary internal voltage, 146 volts with a 9 volts worth of input. Oh my gosh. And it's up and running. Let's just confirm one last time the uh, switching wave on the power supply. There we go, power supply switching wave looks good. Blue lights on. She's up and running, back in the case she goes.